RF man here. I had some of my viewers ask me if I could demonstrate how to measure the input and output impedance of a high frequency amplifier using the Nano VNA. Uh, some of you may have watched my video on a couple of my VHF boards where I showed how to measure the input impedance uh, using the Nano VNA. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate basically that, that same methodology here on the high frequency board. So my setup is pretty much the same. Um, I've got the Nano VNA here, okay, and then I have a quarter wavelength cable, as you can see there, attached to the output side of the board. And then rather than put in a fixed capacitor, which would go either across the transformer or across these two pads for the drain. Um, I put in a trimmer capacitor so we could demonstrate how the tuning changes as we change the capacitance. And then I've got the board grounded the way I would normally have in an RF amplifier or RF system. And I'm applying the bias voltage, which is uh, very important. You can't really do these type of impedance measurements without the transistor being activated and the proper bias level being applied. I typically set my bias between 1.7 and 1.8. The bias voltage will affect uh, the impedance somewhat. Um, also, the length of the cable. I typically recommend a quarter wavelength cable. Um, but of course it depends on your antenna system and sometimes you need to experiment with that to see what's going to give you the best power output. But quarter wave is a good starting point. And I have actually a, another video on that topic. If you're interested, you can search my channel. Now this is a broadband amplifier, okay? In my other videos on VHF, I demonstrated, for example, on two meters, um, but the band is very narrow, right? Two meters is 144 to 148 megahertz. So you have a four megahertz bandwidth. So you saw a very sharp response around that, that uh, particular bandwidth of four megahertz. Here, you're gonna see a much broader response when we go ahead and look at the SWRs. Uh, we're gonna be looking between 2 megahertz and 30 megahertz. So let's uh, basically go over to the uh, software that's available for the Nano VNA. And uh, the measurements that I'm reading are all tabulated here in the software. Um, I'm gonna refer to the charts as I click around and I'll be reading these actual measurements. So this is broadband, so what would we expect? Um, let's start with the SWR since I think that's probably the easiest one for us to relate to. I like to tune somewhere around the center of the band. So here it'd be about 15 megahertz. Uh, then you do have limited resolution uh, here when, you, when you're trying to zero in on a particular frequency. So there I'm at 15.99 uh, megahertz. Um, but let's take a look. Okay, so there's my marker. Okay, and this is SWRs or VSWRs. Okay, and basically you can see the response is fairly flat over the, uh, we'll call it 28 megahertz bandwidth. Okay, and this is what we're looking for in a broadband amplifier. Um, typically, an SWR of 2.0 or less across the whole band is considered acceptable and that's in accordance to the ARRL manual. Um, so you can double check me on that. Um, so anything below that is considered good performance. So as I click around here, you can see about the center of the frequency, I'm at 1.15, 1.16 SWRs. Okay, and as I go to the lower end, you can see I'm at about one to eight, we'll call it. And on the higher end, 
Okay, we get a little bit better performance on the high end. Um, uh, close to a uh, yeah, 1.06, almost a 1. Okay, so that's basically the SWRs across the entire band. Good performance. Uh, again, this is a broadband amplifier, so you're not going to have a 1.0 across the whole band. I think a lot of us understand that. Um, here's the return loss. This is the amount of reflected energy. And you can see in the center of the band, I'm about minus 23 or so. Um, that's, that's very good. There's very little return loss. Um, remember that uh, this is a logarithmic scale, right? So 10 dB is 10 times lower, right? And 20 dB is 100 times lower. 30 dB is 1,000 times lower, right? Than the fundamental frequency. So you can see that 25 or so is, is very good. Um, you know, if we, if we, again, we go to the low end, okay, uh, and we go to the high end, you'll, you'll see it change somewhat, but good performance on the return loss, which is the reflected power. And then back to the Smith chart, if you watched my other video on two meters, um, you want to be as close to the center point of the Smith chart as possible. This is 50 ohms, okay, and just as a reminder, um, the bottom of the chart is minus J, so that means it's capacitive. Top of the chart is plus J, that means it's inductive. You can see the output circuit does change properties a little bit, um, but it's a very tight, very tight circle there. Um, this is this is your 50 ohms real part, okay? So this is the constant resistance circle for 50 ohms. And right in the center there would be no reactants, okay? So again, this is a complex impedance um, and not to overcomplicate things, but the complex impedance, and we can read it right off the screen, okay? You have your real part, so we're at 50.07 ohms. And then you've got your imaginary part, so minus J, right? So we know it's capacitive, right? It's 6.57 ohms. And it actually tells you, um, you know, the, the real values of that, if, you, if, you, if you're interested in that. Um, it'll tell you the, the C value, okay, which is, which is right here, okay? 1.4 nanofarads, okay? So... This is the real part. This is the imaginary part. And remember from my last video, how do we determine the impedance or magnitude, which is the same? We take the 50.07, we square that, and we take the 6.57, and we square that, and we add them together, and then we take the square root, okay? And that's what we call impedance. And that's what's being shown here on the chart, right? So it shows the real part of 50 ohms Okay, but the impedance is closer to, I'll call it 51, 50 ohm, 51 ohms. Okay, so again, square root of the sum of the squares. And some of you requested a spreadsheet from me, so I provided that for you. Um, if you need a copy of the spreadsheet, just uh, send me an email. I'll be happy to send it to you. I went into more detail on my last video on two meters, so you can go back and review that if you're interested. Now I'm going to go ahead and adjust the trimmer capacitor uh, that's across the transformer and we'll see the effects on the Smith chart. So I'm going to go and put this on pause and set that up. All right, so now I'm back. Before I show the effects of trimming the tuning capacitor, I just want to talk a little bit about the RF output transformer. Basically, I'm using material 61, and the turns ratio is 4. And from my other videos, we said that the turns ratio squared equals the impedance ratio. So 4 squared equals 16. So this gives me a 1 to 16 impedance transformation. Now, remember from some of my other videos, on the input side, we're going from a high impedance, which is 50 ohms, to low impedance, which is the input impedance of the transistor. Here we're doing the exact opposite. We're going from a low impedance, which is the output impedance of the transistor, um, according to the data sheet, it's three, 
okay and then we're going to a higher impedance okay so again here we go from high to low and here we go from low to high okay you can also see that because here we have a turns ratio of one to three right primary to secondary so it's a step up transformer on the input side it's a step down transformer okay so basically with the four turns I have a impedance ratio of 16 16 times 3 is 48 ohms so I'm transforming the 3 ohms to 48 ohms which is a very close match and then I have some parasitic effects of the transformer I have leakage inductance which is basically additional inductance that is in series with the transformer plus I have capacitive reactants and inductive reactants so there are several parasitics that have to be dealt with as well and the way I compensate for all of that is to use a trimmer capacitor so basically I'm going to demonstrate what happens when I adjust the capacitor and be able to see the effects on the Smith chart so let's take a look at that I've enlarged the chart a little bit so we can see it a little clearer here is our starting point again this line is where we have zero reactants. Uh, these are the constant resistance circles. So this is 50 ohms, okay, which is where you see the marker, okay. And then we're on the bottom side of the Smith chart, so it's minus J, we're capacitive, okay. And here's the actual measurements. Here's the real part again, 50.3 ohms, and the imaginary part, 8.6 ohms. Now this will refresh about every two seconds or so. Um, so you'll be able to see the effects as I turn the, the trim apart. Um, please bear with me here a minute. I'm trying to do this with one hand on the screwdriver and another hand on, on the trimmer. So it's a little bit cumbersome. Um, so just bear with me a moment. Okay, so now I'm gonna adjust the trimmer Okay, you'll be able to see in real time the effects that it has on the Smith chart. And as you can see, okay, I had it tuned uh, to try to get as close to 50 ohms as I could in the center of the band. Uh, so we were very close to uh, 50 ohms real part, and then we had our imaginary part as well. So you can see as I'm adjusting the trimmer that we're getting further and further away from the 50 ohms and further away from zero reactants. So that's just a look at what happens real time as we, as we tune these transformers. Now I'm turning it the other way and you can see the effects. So that's basically what I wanted to demonstrate today. Uh, I'm going to make a similar video and show the effects on the input side. Hope this was helpful to everyone. RF me. Thanks.